Hello everyone, Lau here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the haul part of Comic Con Dortmund. Dor Dortmund. <laughs> um, yeah, the last video that you saw, I will definitely link it here because it totally makes sense to watch that beforehand. Um, I visited Comic Con Dortmund, which it's a it's a comic con that. What you, what you expect, you know, there are actors, there are some panels, there's lots of merchandise to buy um, and, you know, cosplay and all of that. So it's a, it's a Comic Con uh, and I have visited several Comic Cons in, in Germany, um, like before the pandemic time. Uh, I was an average, like, goer to conventions, anime conventions and Comic Cons as well. Um, and like in 2018 and 19, I already like, like kind of noticed that here and there there are a couple of, um, you know, vintage toy vendors there. I was already buying here and there a little bit of vintage stuff at that time, um, but now, you know, that's like my main thing and not cosplay. Cosplay is like a side part of the adventure, I would say. Um, but uh, like my friend Michi and I, we decided we let's go like after we, we visited the big like you know Star Wars celebration like in April. Uh, let's go to a like normal small Comic Con once again, and um, let's see. Let's just have uh, some fun. And I was like, oh, I hope there are a couple of you know vendors that have some vintage toys. Yeah, and there were so. Um, uh, you saw the uh, the whole like like a vlog, and um, I think you have also seen um, probably almost all of the toys in that vlog. But here in this setting, I'm going to show them to you in detail. It's just a couple of days um, after Comic Con right now. Yeah, so let's start with something that actually I did not get at the convention, just from my friend Sato, um, who uh, we visited for we like we stayed. Uh, she is living uh, around that area and um, so it was like a win-win situation. We also visited our friend, she also came along with us to the con um, and um, you might have heard her name already. She has um, like brought me ponies from Japan, she has brought me ponies from the US once before. She also has a sent, uh, sent a package through a while um, during like vlogmas time with the pony advent calendar. She's not a toy collector at all. We're just friends and she knows uh, that I like the stuff. And uh, one day she she like uh, found out that she had her old Barbies still in her like I don't know basement or wherever she had them and she asked me if I was interested in one of them. She's a little bit younger than me, so her Barbies were more like early 2000s, but um, this one was amongst them. She is Beat Blast Barbie from um, 97, 98, so like uh, box date 97, release date 98. That's still kind of my area of Barbie, although, or that area, era, <laughs> although she's a little bit late. She. Um, has not the superstar face anymore. She is on the Bob Mackie face. Um, that, that very short time span when they kind of switched out the superstar face. There were still a couple of dolls released with the superstar face in uh, 97, 98, but um, they had not like really introduced the very new face like that which uh, they used then from 2000. So they used this face for a while. And you can see it, it's not the typical, you know, 90s Barbie with like these huge like curled bangs and voluminous hair. She just looks a little bit I don't know more tamer. She, she looks late 90s. That's just like early 2000s late 90s um, And I I've had this doll actually twice already or still have her but not the blonde version but the brunette version and um, Yeah, she's not on the correct dress. This is her correct dress. My friend Sato just had her naked, but I had a <laughs> <laughs> Another one of those outfits laying around. I actually would need the correct outfit for the brunette one in blue But um, I thought this, this is fun to have like two of the Barbies um, <laughs> Now they have both the same outfit on um, And yeah, she is in good condition Her hair is nice and uh, you know, I mean it, it didn't look like that when she gave it to when she gave her to me because she looked really really she had like a poof <laughs> 
<laughs> of like, I don't know, you couldn't even like brush through it or anything, but you know, that's Kanekalon hair and you can do like, you can restore it immediately. That, that, that's, that's like, it's my favorite hair fiber for dolls. Um, yeah. Okay, now let's go on to the things that I really bought at the convention and uh, there was this one vendor that had lots of quite expensive stuff on the table but underneath the table there were like some tops with uh, some modern turtles or something okay and Star Wars not vintage but a couple of you know different things and and um, this amazing Jar Jar Binks was in there and also this funny thing uh, I returned to that vendor the next day and bought something else, but let's start with these because Like you know, I like Jar Jar Binks. It's actually not my favorite Star Wars character But I never disliked him and he's just his look. I mean from for, for now right now I think he's iconic He is the character that kind of tore or what how, how can you say it, the, the fandom apart, you know everyone and when when this movie like episode one in 1999 was released like all of the adult like star wars fans hated him and i think <laughs> like he's still not a really beloved character but um i always liked him and it, i think it's like kind of the best thing if you want to have like funny strange like toys from that era from the uh like you know prequel trilogy you should collect Jar Jar because he always just he cracks me up. He's just always looking funny. And um, this is actually a Galoop Micro Machines playset. It's empty. <clears throat> it's a little bit discolored because I mean, you can see he is yellow. It's not that he is actually white, <laughs> um, but this is his original, like more like beige and this yellow is a little bit you know, discolored. I think I can deal with that. Um, it was extremely hard to open him up and I have not fully closed him because it's extremely hard to, to get him open again. But I mean, yeah, from the back side, actually nothing special. You can open these doors uh, because then you can stand him down because you will we'll flip him over. Um, then his head opens like this and his lower part also yep, it opens like this so and then 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 you really need these doors to to make it like stand up otherwise it would have too much like weight to the back and it's a little like place it in there it's like you know your mighty max your poly pocket but for star wars in the late very late 90s i don't have any of the figures for this one at star wars celebration i bought a lot of the very very small ones there you could see they are actually not that good quality they are like super small teeny tiny figures with a little base to stand but this one is just it's fun I mean you can put uh, the figures uh, there you can see this is like what the base of the figures would be so you would probably be able to put one in there I think <laughs> this is like a trap door because you can turn this and then there is an opening and this opening actually connects to yeah the eye because this used to be this was just you know the eye of Jar Jar but you can open it up at the back and it's like a slide so here this connects inside uh, inside here and then falls down here goes through the <laughs> slide <laughs> through the eye and it would come out here uh, it's essentially like as if at the top of the playset, um, I mean, when you turn this the right direction, there's also a like, battle droid coming out, you know, the Naboo invasion. Quite there, the figures would be Qui-Gon and Jar Jar, I think, I don't know if, if another one, maybe a battle droid. Um, you know, Qui-Gon rescues or like uh, saves Jar Jar up there in the woods and then they go down, you know, Jar Jar shows him like the Gungan city underneath the water. This is like here, they would, you know, that's kind of where they slide down. By the way, this thing here, you can like turn back. Uh, there would be, I, I know, what, what, there was also pretty big, you know, ship attached that you could put to this uh, see-through thing and then you could put it here and you would also have the battleship here. But anyways, down here is a like picture of both Nas. Then this looks like, you know, Gungan City. And then you have like a lower part here 
where I don't know what uh, if there's something missing. There's probably also things missing, but it's like, you know, the uh, the like beginning of episode one. Um, and uh, apart from from this whole thing, uh, it's also just a good representation of Jaja. So you can click him in here. Uh, it's just very very difficult. So. in with Jaja stuff, although it's not even Jaja. This is another Gungan. This is uh, Captain Tarplots. Tarplots. And this is another, you know, Gungan for episode one. And I had no idea what this is. When I saw this, like, what the heck is this? Um, it is really like an old, um, you know, Rock'em Suck'em toy. Uh, you have these two characters. Um, I mean, they can move around because of this hinge in the middle. When you push the button then they move their arms or actually one arm so it's like these typical you know rock'em sock'em robots ah. and when one of them would knock this yes it's really difficult to, to but, but when this would knock the battle droid for example then it would fall over then then this one one or the other way around so you can you know lay him down or whatever and when you start the game and you just push them ah, inside there, then you could. <laughs> I've never seen that. That was released by Applause, so not by Hasbro, although Hasbro slash Kenner, Kenner was bought by Hasbro at that time, still like they, they had the typical Star Wars license, but obviously there were so many different companies had the license and the company, toy company Applause made these things. What is it called? They actually just called Naboo Ground Battle Rock'em Sock'em. So Naboo Ground, this is on Naboo. So the end of episode one when they are, you know, the battle droids fighting on Naboo against the Gungans. And um, that's what's called the battle, the ground battle of Naboo. Um, it's obviously from 1999, same as this Jar Jar. And um, yeah. I don't know uh, where I will display it. I just could say no because it is just... I've never seen anything like that, so yeah. And most of the stuff you saw it in uh, the... directly in the, the convention video itself uh, that most of the um, vendors had was like boy toy related. So there were really just a couple of like girl toys. Like the, here and there, there was a Shira figure, but I did have them already. You know, stuff like that. Um, so I was like, okay, then and then I just might like stick to the Star Wars and maybe let's see what else like boy toy related I can find. So uh, the next thing that's why I picked up this April. This is a you know vintage Ninja Turtles uh, figurine. And um, she was just eight euro, uh, which I was considering like, okay, this would probably also be a price that I would be willing to pay at a flea market. Even she's not in super good condition. She's a little bit loose. Um, her, uh, whatever her logo at the back is a little bit like rubbed off. And um, she's not a very sought after figure or anything. Um, but it's like really, when I go to flea markets, it's like, so hard for me to find like anything Ninja Turtles, uh, especially like the you know original like the the 1988 to 96 or whatever the, the first like vintage turtles were released. Well, I really like the figures. Not really that I'm a big collector or anything. It's just like in terms of boy toys, they are crazy. They are funny colors. Uh, they look good. You know, in on, on display, they have super cool, cool like like molds, etc. Um, and I have a very very small collection of Ninja Turtles, um, all in really bad condition because the ones that I find are never in good condition. That's why probably they are still there at the flea market. Um, and I always actually wanted to have like you know a little bit of female representation, which for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles means April. So I wanted to have an April and I'm really happy with this one. This is um, definitely not one of the first releases because she has uh, the orange 
and blue on the stripes and on the color and it says the um, it has the whoo, uh, the press thing it's printed here because there's several different versions it also has a second head mold uh, it could still have um, had come on the 10 back card but I think it's probably one that uh, because this version was also like uh, reissued like for example 1990 uh, because the original one would come from uh, 88 directly but but hey it's a it's an April April O'Neill um, from the original Ninja Turtles and uh, no accessories etc she she would obviously come with accessories I'm fine with that like this is exactly my like level of Ninja Turtles collecting here and there a couple of characters that look okay and cool uh, for like you know under 10 euro or something like that so yeah that's why I picked her up Like this vendor had lots of stuff and I was like, okay, I was, I already was like digging for such a long time. My friends were waiting. I was like, okay, now I just pick up one thing and maybe I return later, <laughs> which I did. Um, and I think, is it actually the next thing already? Yeah, because I returned to that vendor like when my friends and I kind of split up. So part of my friends, all, all the others. <laughs> Uh, they wanted to go to the um, artist alley again, which I had already looked through and there was not a lot of things that I was super interested in So I thought okay I might stick to the like the normal vendor hall and they go to the artist alley and then we meet in an hour again um, And I totally needed that time because now I was really like digging and uh, I found like some some really nice things for example I hadn't seen that before at all this vintage Wicked the Evoc, well, it's a, it's called Presto Magics. Uh, it's like a rub and play transfer thing, uh, or rub and transfer play thing. <laughs> uh, it looks like a board game, and um, it is obviously from um, 1983, so from Return of the Jedi, because it's like branded. And this is what I really, really like to collect: the typical the Wicked the Evoc. And then it still has the Return of the Jedi logo and someone put a little stamp on there, probably the kit and somewhere here is also the name of the kit. This is really charming because this was really played with, so it's not in mint condition. Um, but I really, really like this and it totally fits into my collection. I don't know if it really fits into my <laughs> displays, but... Um, <clears throat> so I couldn't really open it when I was there because it was like glued together not glued but like you know um, it had some adhesive tape around it but I was really um, like happy when I because it was not it was not really expensive I was not like even even just the carton <laughs> I would have liked uh, I didn't know if these rub and play sheets would still be in there no they are not but so it's like this um, like like a board game board so, so to say but uh, it's just a nice like artwork in there and all of these little Ewok uh, pictures there, they were originally not on that artwork, but they were on these, you know, transfer sheets. So you had like, I mean, from the artwork on the box, you could actually see it, you know, uh, you would place those see-through sheets onto wherever you wanted uh, the Ewok to be, like in the waterfall or like on the bridge or wherever. And then you would have this special pen and you would rub it off and it would transfer onto here and you cannot really feel them they have they are really thin uh, you can just see there's a tiny little I have no idea if you can see that there's a tiny little like um, like space around it that is also a little bit more shiny I have no idea if you can see that that's how you can see that it was originally not on there it's like a super super like thin see-through sticker uh, and when you just it, it doesn't feel like there are any stickers on it. So I have never had anything like this in my hands. I know that um, the, this company, and there might have been other companies that, that did something similar, um, have like had so many different like licenses. I know there's My Little Pony ones out there, also from Presto Magics. And just by here is this little insert, insert, so this little pamphlet in here still, that shows you a couple of the licenses, obviously of another Star Wars. Uh, one directly for Return of the Jedi and then G.I. Joe and that Spider-Man and E.T. and you know uh, this is the um, 
blah blah bear what is it called i mean it's it's definitely from Hanna barbera yogi bear that's yogi bear sorry and you know box bunny and all of these different things and they they had more as i said i know for a fact that they are my little pony ones out there um so uh, the rest is just here this is inlay here would probably the, the, the sticker or not stickers so the transfer sheets would have been the upper part is just for this little um uh pamphlet and then this fits exactly into the carton and then you have this and um, even the sides look really cute with it looks like someone already um, put <laughs> the transfers here because they kind of transfer even to the back but these were not transfers this is just the design of the box wicked the ewok i love this i was so happy to see this and at first i was like i don't know, I don't know. It's probably expensive i don't know because this vendor was not exactly cheap um but it was 15 euro and then i bundled it together with some other stuff for example i also found these two boglins uh they're my very first boglins yeah they are baby boglins and um what i like about them i mean i had seen like mini boglins when i was in london or like in uh, when I visited the toy store there um, and they are just like mini like hard plastic like I don't know even like blind bag whatever figurines and I did not like them because with Boglins I honestly have the feeling uh, I, I want some some that are really this typical you know rubbery material what what are Boglins actually um, it's a toy line from the 80s like typical this this grows out like you know um typical boy toys e you can scare your little sister with it etc etc they were bigger the first ones or the normal ones uh, they were hand puppets you could put your hand in and from the inside move the eyes so they would like look around they are all like little like heads and then they have these arms and they look like devils or something i mean they resemble the small ones in a way, um, but the small ones are not hand puppets, which is finger puppets. So they have this opening here. You could, your, if you would not have such long nails that what I do, it would work better. But it's actually just a little finger puppet. But all of them have this, you know, very very rubbery. I don't know what it is. Is it latex or is it is it um, silicone or something? A mix of of them. Um, so some of uh, the boglins also kind of, you know, they peel or they disintegrate. Um, these are the baby ones. They came in little eggs, so like this size, like plastic eggs, and you would open them up, and then you would see, oh, this is the green one, etc. Because there were um, a couple of different molds, and you would think this is the kind of the same mold. <laughs> it's actually not. You can see the difference when you look at the mouth. For example, this has an open mouth, and this is more like a smiley face. Obviously, the eyes, they were like googly eyes. They, they have yellowed and they, they are stuck like the, you, you cannot really make them google, <laughs> googly eyes anymore. And this one is also a little bit discolored. Uh, you can see this dark color is not a real one. It's more like probably sun, sun um, damaged a little bit. But they are like, I don't know, I think they are cute. Um, the, the company that made them actually, it's really started with Mattel. And then the, the license went on to different other companies because the first run wasn't even that uh, successful or like at least, I mean, it kind of was successful, but it was kind of uh, shut down pretty early. And then uh, I, I'm not exactly sure, but I know that Europe definitely had more and different ones than the US had. I'm not even sure if these baby boglands were released in, in America, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, now I have two of the mini baby boglins let me check on their names um i think that the green one is called boink and the purple one is doink <laughs> from the mold and each mold was available in like uh, i don't know how many different colors six different colors i think you know green and dark green and purple and blah blah blah, blah brown whatsoever um and And the last thing that I decided to pick up from this vendor that I kind of like um, uh, bundled, ev bundled everything together is like the big ticket item definitely, which is the Sorceress. It's a Masters of the Universe figure that I like, it was like, it's one of my favorites. 
I'm not a big time Masters of the Universe collector, like, no. Um, like, if, if, if any, then I like the Shira ones more, obviously, because they have brushable hair, etc. But um, I pick them up at flea markets, sometimes I find them for cheap, etc. This one was definitely not cheap and I thought I would probably also never have this one. This is the third like female figure. So there were already two other female figures released before that one and um, I do have them. I found them in a coincidence at a flea market, like they were my very first uh, Master of the Universe figures that I found and I always thought if, if I could just wish for any other Master of the Universe figure, I would like the Sorceress. She really looks beautiful. She has a really cute face. She has a really, really nice like body sculpt without being like overly, like, you know, the men, the male figures, like super bulky and etc. And as far as I know, she also looks very, very much like her, um, like cartoon counterpart, which is not always the case with He-Man. <laughs> um, and she is a very, very light release. So um, the Sorceress, I don't know if that was really the last wave, but uh, she has a stamp of 1986 and she was released in 87. That's actually the same wave that some of the other really, really high-end, rare and um, like, like difficult, like not really rare, but definitely uh, expensive figures like the uh, like Scareglow, for example, or like King Randor. Uh, some of those they are also from this wave and that also makes her really expensive so she's not complete she is missing her stuff that's the only accessory that she has it's a, a like huge white stuff with a like kind of ornament like a sculpting at the top would have been nice but like I'm okay she was expensive enough because she was like 90 90 euro yeah usually I don't even spend that money on ponies but then I was like, okay, I also want to buy this like Ewok thing and the two Boglins, which were like eight, I think, together. And this was 15 and she was like 90. So I tried to kind of combine this. How much can we make? Blah, blah, blah. And then it was like, let's do it for 100 all together, which either like I got this just for 10 euro all together here with, with these or like makes it, I don't know, maybe these down to 20 and her to 80. It was like, I have that money with me. I want this figure real bad. I really want her like in vintage and not the, um, the um, you know, the newer origins version of her because I think her face looks way better in the vintage version. Uh, I just, I just, you know, I just pay the money and I have her. Uh, she was really dirty. Um, I'm happy that uh, she's pretty clean now. Also, her legs were actually broken. I, I did not know that when, when I, I had her. I, I just felt like, oh, her legs are pretty, like, they are not wobbling around and everything. But then I started to clean her and the legs just fell off. So someone had just glued them in. <laughs> Great. I think even two different people had already done that because there was, like, residue from, like, two different glues. Um, yeah, one of them I have not even been able to, to get off completely. That's a little bit of brown, like leftover of glue. But I fixed her legs because it's actually not that difficult. I don't even have these typical, you know, bridges that you put in because the legs are just on rubbers and the rubber can, you know, disintegrate. The rubber can get old and like crumble apart that's what happened in with her all of the rubber was just like a sticky gluey crumbly mess <laughs> in there um, but I I took like just normal like rubber bands that I use you know for like something like this you know like jewelry or you can also do like use it for sewing or whatever it's, it's pretty thin but not super thin <laughs> I don't know how to explain it rubber band and um, I, I glued it into the legs separately and then uh, there's in her body, you can like kind of put it around like in her body and then you can knot it. And I mean, I don't know how to explain it. I did it different than what like, you know, typical Masters of the Universe collectors would do, but um, it, it works and I can stand her up. She is like, perfect now again I mean at least as, as long as this rubber <laughs> holds up this rubber band maybe in the next 15 years before this one decides to disintegrate she is fine so um, yeah
if I would just have glued the legs and then I wouldn't have been able to move them anymore. And I was like, oh, I can't do that. I have done something similar with my Megan doll already from My Little Pony. She also had a similar technique, though a little bit different, but there is something that you can like, like make, make the rubber band hold inside her body. Um, then you make a knot and the rest of the knot you like squish inside. Uh, with this leg and with the other leg, they are now two separately like knotted onto her inner parts of the body, so to say, whatever. And um, yeah, Sorceress, one of the very thought after Master of the Universe figures, and I'm very proud to have her now. So, yeah, at that moment, I was like already really happy, like. Uh, oh my goodness, I think I made a really good purchase here and this and I, I found some stuff because like when I walked into this uh, Convention at first I was like, oh, I'm not gonna find anything because it's all very very boy toy related if it's vintage I mean, obviously there's lots of Funko Pops and and all of those I don't know Marvel and whatsoever and, and uh, Everything manga anime stuff and blah blah blah. So uh, will I ever find anything and at this point? I was like already like pumped like hey cool. I think it is a good haul and um, Little did I know that I would find even more amazing stuff because the next vendor was like the nicest guy and the nicest family because it was uh, his wife was with him um, ever that I have ever met at a convention um, at first, or actually the second time around, I walked uh, past them, him, uh, I saw that now he had laying out this glow worm. I have never had a glow worm, like obviously not in my childhood because they are way older uh, than I was a child. The, the, they were started like by Hasbro, the glow worms in 1982. So actually the same year that the first My Little Ponies uh, released or like 83 is more the release of the ponies, but they are stamped 82. Um, and, and those two toy lines some, sometimes also co, uh, like like live next to each other in the same universe because there's for example a My Little Pony that has a little glow worm toy with it or uh, the glow friends which are more like um, they they are really like glow in the dark they they sometimes uh, are in the same like comics as the My Little Pony wears or wear etc so they're kind of intertwined with My Little Pony. Uh, so I was really happy to see one. I don't have any of them. There's actually more than this one because I think this is the original first normal green release. Might not be the normal one because some, some of them have like different, um, you know, trims here at, at the head. I don't know. But there's also some that are in other colors that have like um, printed fabric or that are more this, you know, like, like this very, very sleek, like I don't know what, what this is called, like like you you would make um, parachutes out of this parachute material thing, or like smaller ones or whatever. Uh, they they I don't know if they are still released under that name, but uh, since then uh, I think maybe, but they look different now probably. Um, they they have like uh, also had like a really long lifespan as a as a toy line definitely. And the thing is actually they would have like a little compartment inside. This one is missing it. Uh, you would put batteries in there. And when you would hug it, <laughs> then the head would start to glow. Um, there has also been some that have like other features, some that are musical or um, I, I don't know if this glowing head thing also is the vibrating thing because like the vendor also told me, yeah, this one had a vibrating feature, which is like, uh, yeah, I don't know um, if, if that was the correct thing because, you know, adults will think mm -hmm, you shouldn't give that to children if it's vibrating. I, I could not really find out about that, but I just know that there are several different ones over the time. Uh, this to me looks like the first released normal one. Um, Maybe it's not, maybe it's the vibrating one, I have no idea. Um, the face is just super cute. You know, it has a rubbery face that really feels like a My Little Pony. And then it always has this night cap hat and it has just a soft plushy body. It's like, a, you know, it, it's a glowing worm. It's just, oh, look at these sleepy eyes. Uh, I think it is really, really sweet and I love the colors because, you know, I love this bright green and uh, really happy, funny colors. So I already thought like he wanted like 20, I think, and I was like, oh, can we make 15? And he said, yes, so 15, 
fine with that uh, because you know we're not at a flea market we have a set of acceleration I'm not celebration. we are at a convention so I, I'm not gonna pay two euro for this or something but and uh, we started to talk this you, you know this is like uh, all not all but a lot of it is on camera and uh, we started to talk about this one and uh, about my, my YouTube channel because obviously I filmed the stuff and I gave him my card and he's like, oh, that's interesting. I want to check it out. His woman, his wife was also really interested and he said, oh, they, they have a little uh, daughter that is like, uh, would also enjoy it, etc., etc. They were from the Netherlands, by the way. And um, I said, yeah, no, no, my, my main collection actually is My Little Pony. And he was like, oh, I actually have a bag of ponies with me. And please check out the video. <laughs> Uh, because I have that all on video. <sighs> there was a Dutch exclusive pony in there. I like, when I saw it in the back, I was at first, I didn't see, I just saw the hat, you know, and this, this pony pose in white. Um, I thought of, um, where is it? Do I have it here? Yeah, I have it here. Because I could just see the hat and it's white, so I thought it might be floor bouquet. Uh, it was not because as soon as I like like saw that she had like blue hair, I was like, wait. A white pony in the posy pose with blue hair? Who is that? And like immediately was like, oh my goodness, is that really one of the Dutch exclusive ones? And it makes sense. Um, at that point I didn't know that he was Dutch as <laughs> for the vendor, but like uh, Dortmund is like way more like in the western part of, of uh, Germany where like the border to the Netherlands is pretty close where I live the border to Poland is really close so that's like across the country um, so that would make sense that uh, some some vendors from from that area would also come to to a German convention <laughs> and um, yeah he said oh his daughter found this at a flea market oh my goodness I, I couldn't believe my luck because I've never had a Dutch exclusive. They are usually, no, I mean, A, in Germany, they are not that like common, <laughs> obviously. Um, and if they are in collector's hands, then they keep them. They are not selling them. <laughs> uh, when they pop up um, on, um, I don't know, on Vinted or eBay, Kleinanzeigen or something like that, uh, I mean, they're expensive or people don't even say how much they want. They just say, make me an offer. And with that, I never do that because I know that they are higher than what I would be willing to pay. Um, so so I, I never had the chance to grab one of those because uh, what does that mean Dutch exclusive yeah I mean they don't have a Dutch stamp so I would not consider them a Nirvana pony um, Nirvana pony for me personally uh, is actually one that is also produced in a different country and this is normally produced in China can you read that um, but they were just released in, in the Netherlands and at a very, very late point in time. Um, they were actually the last ponies released for the first generation. Um, I read that they were released as late as 1995. That's like a time when there were no G1 ponies in the US anymore, not even in the rest of, of uh, Germany or Europe or wherever. Um, they just kind of decided to uh, take some pony designs from other ponies that were released already and kind of like give them different colors. So for example, this one is based on um, uh, Starlight from the, the you know, pony tails, uh, the, the kind of core seven or however many ever ponies they are, um, from TV star, TV star ponies, uh, which actually is a pink pony and uh, the star, etc. is more like different pink colors and uh, okay, still yellow but she has also a I think dark pink mane oh, I'm just like she's also really expensive and rare pony because she's already late um, and they just okay make it white <laughs> and uh, put a different symbol or put a symbol in different colors and give them a different main color and they have done that with a couple of ponies I think there's at least 10 15 ponies out there maybe ponies adult ponies that just have a different color and are like Dutch exclusive. They don't even have like new, really new names. They are just like always what the symbol shows. So for example, this is just called Star Pony or in, in Dutch, then I, I, I'm not speaking Dutch, but something like Star Just Pony or something, I don't know. Um, or there's one that has butterflies. It's 
so it's called butterfly pony <clears throat> or that one that has a seashell it's called shell pony um so it's like the last thing that was released for the first generation of my little pony and you know just in the netherlands although their cards actually also say my client's pony so they have the min klinius pony or, the, or however like the dutch version is uh pro produ pronounced not produced pronounced and they also have the german my client's pony my little pony on it but i don't think that they're released in germany um they they are just super tied to the netherlands so um yeah i was just so happy obviously i could have said yeah i just pay like these two or three euro for it but i had such a nice conversation with him he was so nice he, they uh, obviously i had given him my card so he said he would watch those videos if you're watching that hi <laughs> thank you thank you again um so i was like i cannot be that that like just you know i i I would feel strange I would if I would then say in the video how rare and expensive this pony can be and I would just be sneaky sneaky uh, three euro so I was like okay let's let's meet somewhere in the middle of like a very high price and the super cheap price and like I said 15 euro and actually picked up another pony <laughs> uh, from this uh, vendor because um, uh, the back had just this G1 pony in, then a couple of G3s, and the rest were fakies. Um, but I decided to buy this fakie because it's a really funny, a really strange one. I never had seen one of those like in real life. It's an adult old Leonard fakie. So, Leonard is a, is a toy company that like also produced during the 80s and 90s. Uh, they have a couple of nice toy lines, but most of them are always the, you know, a little bit knockoff type of toy lines. They they have a knockoff line of G.I. Joe's, the, the Corpse, uh, Leonard Corpse figures or something like that. And they are also good quality, just a little bit less good quality than G.I. Joe's, for example. Um, and they had also a pony fakey line. Um, this one is directly also stamped 1984 Leonard Toys, made in China. So it's definitely one of the early ones. So I think this uh, size, you know, it it's comes really close to an adult normal pony, just slightly smaller, uh, was probably out there uh, since 84, since since very, very early on. Um, the other Leonard ponies that, that are I am more familiar with are actually these. They are more from the 90s. They are really cute. I did not pick this one up, this one that I already have. Um, so, and I, I think they are one of the cutest fakie lines. Also, quality-wise, yeah, their hair is polypropylene, so it's it's not proper nylon like real My Little Ponies do have. But other than that, they are not bad. And this one is just so freaking funny. I mean, look how many like symbols it has. So it has a normal like you know rump symbol, a cutie mark, very elaborate, huge shell and bubbles. Just at one side, by the way, not at the other side. But then it has like a I don't know, like a garland around um, around the neckline, all with you know seashells or no, these are not shells, you know, like sea like uh, stars uh, and bubbles. And then at the forehead, there's another shell. Um, I worked on the hair, as I said, polypropylene, but you can make it work. It's not the worst. I think it, they they used to have the size uh, length of hair, so it's not cut. I think. And um, the colors are so fun and you know can you can you see they have like different painted hooves like pink and, and purple and they they were released also in different versions not all of them had so many different symbols but um, yeah the only thing that I think makes them stand out as not as cute is the face the head mold is not really cute uh, they have pretty small eyes and you know this this the snout that goes like down i mean it's more realistic horses do look like that but i mean this is cuter <laughs> um but i've never like they're not rare or anything you know i just never had one in front of me um that i was that i was able to buy and obviously i don't pick up uh fakies online so i was like yeah that's also coming home with me so like then for these two like 15 and I'm still in heaven. This was the best toy hunting experience like in a long, long time. Um, I'm, I'm so happy to have this 
Star Pony. It's just called Star Pony. Star Starches Starches Pony. <laughs> um, and I don't know, I have to find a really special place in my collection somewhere where I can always look at it. It's not hidden. Um, I'm, I'm just so, so, so happy. But actually it did not end there. I think, was it even the first day? I also picked up something at the artist alley. Oh, it was the next day. It might have been the next day. Uh, I think, I don't know if that I filmed that, probably not. I mean, I don't know, but I picked up um, some very cute earrings. You know it, I like my, you know, colorful resin um, earrings, pastel, glittery, whatever. And I could not uh, resist when, you know, in the artist alley, there were so many like small, like small, uh, crafting like sm small shops that's what I wanted to say small shops uh, they that they, they craft uh, these things um, themselves etc and uh, I picked up those shells really really nice like resin mold they have glitter and uh, more like you know confetti in there they are iri almost iridescent or no, not almost they are iridescent so I can wear them with every kind of pastel fun outfit um, they, they are more like anything, they are more like light, light pink something, but like I don't have anything that's like shell uh, shaped in terms of earrings uh, in that style, so yeah, 8 euro and they are called Blütensee, so they also had very cute, they even had like um, skirts and stuff like that, so they have like a little logo, it's a little bit hard to read if you're interested in them check them out they were also really nice like every one of us bought something there michi sato and i we all three bought stuff there um yeah and actually the last thing that i decided to pick up uh was also the second day um but something that i had seen the day before and that's all of those oh my goodness all of those uh star wars rebels small figures uh, da, 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 seven figures um, and at first I asked for the whole bag because there were more in there but like she wanted like 25 for the whole bag and I was like okay I actually just want this and this and this and immediately <laughs> when I like pulled them out of the bag uh, she was like okay two euro per piece per figure that made it way less expensive as if I would have bought the whole bag um, because like in the bag there were a couple more uh, characters that I was not that interested in, all from Star Wars Rebels so actually pretty nice put together um, and you know they are not vintage or anything Star Wars Rebels is a animated uh, Star Wars TV show from around 2015 uh, 2016 something like that um, I don't know until when I think until 2018 they were the ra they uh, ran but these figures are all from 2015 and 16 I think can you please I don't know whatever and they are characters that I mostly don't have uh, really rarely see the figures itself are not that good because you know they don't have a lot of articulation they are pretty cheaply made they are pretty like small and thin uh, but they are still in the same like um, um, size that I collect and uh, I love Star Wars Rebels so it, it was like oh really cool I see all of those characters together let's get them so let's start this is Captain Rex he is like actually a clone trooper from you know the um, from Star Wars um, the Clone Wars but he's way older here it's cool that you can remove his helmet so um, he gets into the fight again i am pretty happy that i think i picked out almost all of the correct weapons because he has like two of his um typical you know clone blaster pistols i picked out the two gray ones i think he also came with something else like a bigger like staff with a fire or whatever you know things that he actually not, does not have in the show <laughs> that just like were made for a toy i think he was from 2016 he was a single release uh it's amazing that i have like old captain rex now 
um, I picked up Hera. I actually do have her, but I don't have the version where she has this uh, flight helmet that indicates that she actually was released with the A-Wing together, so with the Starfighter. Uh, that makes her a little bit more of a rare figure. And uh, right now, you can only get this character, um, so Hera, in the smaller three and three quarter inch um, like size uh, from from this. So there's nothing else. There's never been like a Star Wars like vintage collection one or something like that. I think that will change once the Ahsoka show hits because live action show Hera will be in it. So that they, they will make more figures. Um, she's one of my absolute favorite characters. So I was like, okay, it's one of the more rare ones actually from the kind of if you consider like Star Wars Rebels anything rare um, and I don't have her with her helmet so um, I might pick her up as well then I had no idea what this guy was <laughs> I just thought yeah he's something from one of the uh, Rebels episodes he is called I already forgot it again IGRM some kind of IG droid but not you know not IG-88 or whatever IG-11 um, and he just looks cool and he did not have any accessories he was actually released together with this one one of the more side characters from the show Visago but such a cool design so it's really good to have a figure representation of him he is kind of an antagonist but then becomes like a helper so and uh, I, I'm pretty proud that I picked out the correct weapon to him this golden blaster uh, very small things but yeah I think uh, all of the other accessories that I missed were also in this bag so if I would have picked up the whole bag I would have had everything but there were some Wookiees in there that I was not interested in and etc um, then we have the Grand, Inqu Grand Inquisitor so this is was his first like introduction into the Star Wars uh, canon through uh, Rebels. Uh, he has been since now also in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Uh, he looks a little bit different and I prefer his like animated version way more. Uh, he has his you know Inquisitor lightsaber and uh, just a cool looking dude. I think he was also a single release. And now we have another Inquisitor the seventh sister and Darth Maul they came in a two-pack yeah Darth Maul <laughs> uh, yeah he he did not die in, in episode one uh, he came back in, in the Star Wars the Clone Wars and he in between had a criminal syndicate and there's a whole huge story with him and he was also in Star Wars Rebels that's where actually and finally he died um, but he is uh, his kind of I mean, he looks very slim and slender and everything, but this is also how he looked in Star Wars Rebels. He has his double-bladed lightsaber, the one that he wields around that time. He had also way more accessories. I think it was in the back. There was like kind of a backpack with blah, 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 blah. But this is nothing that he has in the show, so I didn't recognize it belonging to it. This hood makes sense because he kind of, you know, disguises him also. But underneath this hood, eh, come on take it off you see his horned helmet so yeah can never resist a Darth Maul figure he's such a cool character and uh, the seventh sister is another one of the inquisitors actually voiced by Sarah Michelle Geller <laughs> Interestingly enough, I think she is now missing here her, um, she has kind of a visor, like something black that you could put in front of her face. It, it, had, it was probably in there, I did not see that, I did not know that. But I have also her, her uh, Inquisitor lightsaber that you could also put on her back. There's a little, you can take it in there. And um, I'm also very proud that I recognized that her little spider droid was also in there. It's something that you would put on her shoulders, but it's not really holding up really well, Some, somehow like this. There it is. So, somewhat complete. And I'm happy to pick, that I picked them up because they were like two euro per piece that made it like 14 euro for, for all the seven of them with, with all almost all of accessories. Or let's say the accessories that I care for because I could recognize them belonging to the character, not some kind of 
additional silly toy made accessories like huge backpacks with blaster cannons or whatever that Darth Maul never had. So these were all the pickups from Comic-Con Dortmund and I hope you enjoyed especially the toy hunt but also getting more in information on all of the stuff that I picked up. So some really amazing finds in there, some small finds that I'm just happy about. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing if you like this uh, vintage toy content and uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I hope that the comments are open so you can tell me anything you want. I'm always happy to engage with you, although sometimes I might answer a little bit later or if you answer on the video when it has been out already for a couple of weeks, then I might not immediately see the comment, but it makes me really happy when you are happy and tell me that you are happy about my videos. So um, thank you so much for watching. See you real soon and may the toys be with you. Bye.